What is BIM dictionary? It is it is a, a, a an approach to uh, to first it has it has multiple levels. Okay, so people see probably one or two levels, but it has multiple levels. The first thing is to to provide a glossary of common terms or terms that people commonly use. Okay, so this doesn't mean that the term itself is not formal term. So, for example, there are now terms that are part of international standards, but because they're commonly used, we include them. Okay. Um, there are common terms not within standards, but they come from research. We also include them. So it's a first point to start learning about BIM. And again, BIM as in a general topic I just mentioned. So that's if you want the first level of the dictionary. Come in, learn about this topic from an authoritative, you know, at most, as much as we could, you know, of well-researched uh, and interconnected platform. Start your journey of learning there, okay? And then hopefully uh, you uh, you could go deeper and, and that, then we'll go to the next level of, of the dictionary, okay? Now, so so that's the first level, the, the glossary. The second level is, and this is what, you know, if, if any of your uh, listeners or viewers have seen our presentation, is about taking it to making it a, a knowledge base, okay? And that's a very big difference. Uh, you remember the days of the encyclopedia, you know, uh, I don't know if you had the encyclopedia at home or, you know, whatever. Uh, nowadays, this encyclopedic approach to knowledge has to a degree disappeared. Like it, it you used to, to feel if you want to learn something and it is, you know, you want to have confidence in it. You used to go and open Encyclopedia Britannica or Americana or Collier or whatever it is, you know, you used to have. You open it and you don't question it too much. Okay, you know, it's there, so many peers, so many experts, you know, have reviewed it and you read it and you take it as a fact, okay? or at least as a really very close to the fact. Currently in the, on our digital world, we don't have that, okay? Now there's so many sources and resources and, you know, it makes a simple topic complex. So you wanna reduce this complexity by trying as much as possible to bring back this encyclopedic approach by providing a an online, of course, it's digital, it's interconnected, but as much as we can, um, simplified entries to complex topics that you know, you know, uh, you know, it is authoritative, it is dependable, it is reliable, it is research-based. Doesn't mean we don't make mistakes, but of course we do, but this is the aim of the second level, going to a knowledge base, okay? I can go more. You know, if third level is, it's a base. Uh, it's it's our common uh, uh, modular language. The, if you you know, in in our initiative, we have lots of projects, and each project will focus on different things. We have macro adoption, you know, about policies. We have one for learning, one for performance improvement within companies, one for integrate information. We need to connect them. And only when having a, you know, a, a, a dictionary, uh, you know, a glossary, a, a, a reference, which, you know, all projects rely on equally, can we connect these projects together? If there's no dictionary, if there's no glossary, if there's no, you know, this bedrock of foundation, this bedrock foundation of knowledge, these projects will be separate, will go their own way, and they will not benefit each other. So I can go on, but that's the three main reasons why we have the dictionary.